Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. Except today I clearly have tea because we're just going through the same coffee I've been going through. The um, Dusk Before Donuts by Bones Coffee, which is delicious, but we're still like getting through it, so nothing exciting. And I needed some green tea today, but I also have it in my cool Been There Star Wars series Hoth mug. Lipstick, ignore that. It's so fun. I love it so much. So today's video, we have a book haul. It's kind of a big book haul. It's 30 books. I know, but here's the thing. I love buying books. I love trying new stories. And some of them are replacements for books that I'm getting rid of, which is a whole different kind of crazy on its own, which I'm not saying you're crazy if you do that. It's just my thing. And I like to have books that match. Or some of my books get damaged. There was one instance where my husband spilled some coffee on one of these and it was completely messed up. So we, I got him another one. It was like three or four dollars, it wasn't a big deal. Stuff like that. So I'm just gonna share with you all of the books that I've picked up in the past couple months, which I got for some pretty good deals. So let's just get into it. Okay, let's start with the books that I got at Ollie's. If you've never heard of Ollie's, it's basically this big outlet store. It's not just books, it's all kinds of things. We bought like a shovel there the other day too. They have a ton of stuff, it's just whatever overstock type things get sent to them and then they have it for a discount price. And every so often I'll go through the book section to see if there's anything interesting. I would say half of the time I don't get anything, half of the time I might get one or two things. There was a couple that I thought would be worth a shot this time, so I'll share those with you. The first one I got was Ink in the Blood by Kim Smakel. Smakel? You have to correct me if I'm wrong. Ink in the Blood. This was $2.99 at Ollie's. And basically from what I've heard of this, it's about a world where this, where the group of people you're following are in a type of circus type thing where they perform. And one thing in this culture is they use magic to tattoo different things on people's bodies that represent the divine's will and guide the recipients. And then from there, it sounds like the kind of system is unraveled and this person finds out the truth and it's not what they thought it was gonna be. And she escapes from that, and that's where the traveling, like, performing theater troupe comes into play. And they're trying to use their gifts for performance rather than, like, this propaganda as they see it. But then they realize the divine is following them, and that is somebody they never thought even existed. So it sounds interesting, and honestly, like, when this came out a while ago, was it 2019? This came out last year in 2020, and I was interested in it then, actually but it was kind of one of those things where I wasn't so interested in it that I was gonna pick it up. But when I saw it for $2.99, I thought it would be worth a shot. The next book I got at Ollie's is Fox by Nadine Brandis. And I had never actually heard of this book, but since then I have seen it on a couple of people's bookshelves on booktube and I was actually curious about it and I haven't looked up reviews or anything for it. I'm kind of going in blind, but this is actually a YA. I thought it was adult where I found it in the sections. And basically the little blurb says, Thomas Fox is turning into stone. And the only cure to the stone plague is to join his father's plot to assassinate the king of england so this sounds like a twist of the tale guy fox um, if you've seen v for vendetta that guy fox and basically he is trying to assassinate the king because it's a really like terrible society that's kind of what i know about this and kind of what i'm inferring about this that may not be extremely accurate but i know bits and pieces from the blurb that i said to you and actually when i read the synopsis it was pretty vague and so i'm just kind of kind of Whenever I pick this up, I'm just gonna figure out what it's about. I only got two more books from Ollie's and the next one is God Blind by Anna Stevens. The blurb on this is saying the red gods are rising. And this just sounds kind of dark and kind of interesting, like a grim dark tale. And it says for fans of like Joe Abercrombie and Mark Lawrence, people in this world worship bloodthirsty gods. And basically an evil king is trying to take down this people. His name is Real Poor and he is trying to turn them towards the gods of light and he's a seer and so it's just kind of like the battle between good and evil it sounds like and the more and more of his people keep turning towards these red gods that's kind of all i know about it at the moment and that's pretty much all i'm going to know i thought it was worth a shot i'm not sure if it's gonna be any good i think this came out several years ago and i think it's a trilogy and this is the first one. Oh, this is the part that I thought was interesting. It says, bathed in blood, ruled by anger, banished thousands of years ago. The time has come for the veil between worlds to be broken and for the red gods to unleash their fury. So we'll see. Next book I got, I've kind of, I've seen it on different outlet sites or different 
outlet stores multiple times and every time I'm like that sounds interesting but I don't know who I'm gonna get it and it was just kind of back and forth and back and forth so I saw it for $2.99 I just decided that I was gonna go ahead and try it and that is the Lady Grogue by Jen Bennett and I think Jen Bennett writes a lot of contemporary but this sounds more fantasy and it's about Vlad the Impaler she's going after this ring Vlad the Impaler's ring and I think what ends up happening is he they, everybody thinks he's dead or he's like sleeping away, you know? And because she's after this ring and starts awakening these things that he comes to life. And he's also known as Son of the Dragon in this. So I don't know it's, if it's about Dracula, which is what it's saying. It's saying the Prince of Romania, Vlad Dracula. If it's about that, I think it'll be an interesting read. The next three are ones that I just needed a different copy of. So I got Roar by Cora Carmack because I took it to the beach with me and then accidentally took it to the pool with me and I had it under my chair and I didn't realize my towel wasn't covering it and it got dripped on and it got a lot of pool water on it and I read it and finished it and all that but I did really like it went ahead and got a copy that wasn't messed up and it was only a few dollars thankfully same with Fate of Ten by Pitticus Lore um, my husband I think I mentioned this in my unhaul video my husband spilled a bunch of coffee on his copy and so I went ahead and got him this because it was just a few dollars to replace it for both of those books, if you haven't heard of them, Roar, I've talked about a little bit on my channel. It's about a girl, a princess that is supposed to have storm magic. She doesn't have any, and she's trying to figure out why, and she goes on this journey to find it. And The Fate of Ten is in the I Am Number Four series, and it's been a movie, and I'm sure you've heard of it. It's pretty popular. But basically, it's about a boy who's living an ordinary life, and then these aliens come to his home, and they try to kill him, and he finds out he's part of these, I want to say it's 12, 12 people. That they have, like, special powers or abilities, and they're from this other world. And so just battling through that. The next one I got a different copy of is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I hate that it has this permanent sticker on it with Netflix because none of my other ones have that. But I accidentally bought the UK edition and the US edition. The UK edition of Six of Crows and the UK edition of Crooked Kingdom when I bought them years ago for my husband. And that drives me absolutely nuts when books don't match or when they're different heights. That's what was happening. So when I saw this for like $7, I just said, you know what, let's go ahead and get this. The My UK copy is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And so I'm just going to give that to the bookstore and try to get some money back. If I get even half of what I paid for this, I think that's fine. But anyway, so this is Six of Crows. Um, if you haven't heard of this, it's very popular. It's a high story in a fantasy setting. So it's still in the Grishaverse and it still has Grisha ties if you've read Sh the Shadow and Bone trilogy. and But this is about the heist an impossible heist. Love this book. That's this. My husband and I went to a used bookstore not long ago and we decided to pick up a couple things. The first one was World War Z by Max Brooks and I've watched this movie. I love this movie and we thought that this would actually be a really cool read and I think my husband would really like reading it as well. So we just went ahead and grabbed this. Basically it's about um, a zombie apocalypse happening and how each part of the world deals with it. I don't have a great example but like say if you they were at the Great Wall of China they would utilize the wall to help them in fighting these zombies. So it's just kind of interesting. It's more so about how each country and different parts of the world are handling this and the military aspects than it is like a fantasy novel. But I still thought that would be really interesting to look into. The next one I got that I was only going to get if it was super cheap and it was, was The Vampire Diaries. It's The Hunters Volume 2 Moon Song. And the reason I got this is because I have the first one and the third one. It's the last little series of Vampire Diaries that I need to read. I read the, all of the other ones when I was in high school and I just want to know how it ends. And so I went ahead and got this and when I'm done with them, I will be passing them along. But I figured if I could grab it for a cheap price to finish the series out, that would be a good idea. So that's what I did. The next one is also one that I've seen several times, kind of wanted to get it, wasn't sure, flip-flopped, and then we found it at this used bookstore. So I went ahead and grabbed it and that is The Memory Thief by Lauren Manzi. And basically what this book is about is their currency is memories. At least that's how I understand it. And citizens are divided by like their abilities. And basically it comes down to this one individual, the main character, who is tired of living in this corrupt society. And then her mother is taken and she's going to be auctioned off. And she's trying to prevent anything she can from this happening. So she teams up, I think, with some criminals and she's going to have to steal this map of a maze in order to save her mother. So I don't know, that sounds really interesting. When I honestly, the thing that I learned the most about it was that memories were the currency and that just sounded really interesting and like a fun read. Okay, now we're getting into more of the books that I've been wanting for a while or excited about or just came out recently, those types of things. 
So I did go to Barnes & Noble and got some buy one 50% off a couple of times. But this one I got was the Iron King by Julie Kagawa. And I have Shadow of the Fox up there. I haven't read it yet. But I've heard about the Iron Fae series and I've never read it. And I know like they came out with new covers. They have been coming out with special editions and they just released like another like the first book in a new series in this world but it's like different characters i was just kind of intrigued and kind of wanted to know what it was about so i went ahead and picked this one up this is the first one and basically the main character i think her name is megan yeah her name is megan and she is about to turn 16. she turns 16 she talks about finding her true love but she says i don't think that's the way it's going to be for me and then she learns the truth that she's actually the daughter of a fake king and it's there's a deadly war going on in this realm so that sounds kind of fun, like similar Fae stories, but I think it'll be fun. And I haven't actually read a lot of Fae stories. I've just recently read A Court of Thorns and Roses and those books. And I liked them okay, so I think this could be fun. We'll see. I just heard a lot of people talk about this and I kind of just want to know. And actually, I feel like I have to read this series to get to the other one, but the one that just came out, I think it was The Iron Raven, sounds really fun. And I would like to read that one, but I feel like I need the context of the first series to get into that one. I'm sorry if you can hear my husband weed eating. He's currently outside the window doing it right now. The next one I got is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. Come on, man. I really hope you can't hear that. And this is the first book in a trilogy. And it says, two young women centuries apart hold the power to either save their world or doom it. I've heard a lot of good things about this book. And basically, an assassin tries to come for this one of the main character's best friends. I believe this is two perspectives. Comes for her best friend, and so she has to reveal all of these secrets. And she exposed herself as a pair, one of a pair of prophesized queens. One is the queen of light, and one is the queen of blood. And to prove that she's the sun queen, she has to go through all of these trials. Elemental magic trials. If she fails, she'll be executed if she can survive the trials first. And if she fails, she'll be executed unless the trials kill her first. And then the other perspective is a bounty hunter, which is super cool. And her mother vanishes and in order to find her, she joins this like rebel captain fellow and she learns that the king or the emperor's heart is terrible and he's like this awful person. And I guess the story goes from there. So that sounds really interesting. I don't know how I feel about the split timelines because I feel like the first one and the trial sounds a lot more interesting to me than the second one, but bounty hunter is super cool. So I don't know. I'm excited about this. This next book is not fiction, but it's something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, and I just really want to know what this person says about this issue. But it is called Jesus Feminist by Sarah Bessie. And basically, it's kind of like a letter to the church about how a patriarchal society is not what God intended, and kind of inviting people to revisit the Bible's view of women, because a lot of people have skewed vision of what it is. A lot of people think that it's oppressing women, and it's actually not, and a lot of people think it's like telling women that they are lower than men, which, which it's not, but people have that perspective of it. And so it's really cool that she is writing this. That was actually what my master's thesis was about. And it talks about exploring God's radical notion that women are people too, and how, you know, God didn't say these things, we messed it up. And so, I don't know, I'm just really excited to get into this. I think it's gonna say some really great stuff. All right, back to fiction and fantasy. The next one I got, I've heard Becca talk about this. I think it's Becca Books, gosh. I'm gonna have to link her channel down below because I'm blanking on her channel name. But Becca has talked about this book a lot and it sounds really interesting and the cover is so pretty. But that is Rapacitic by Laura Thalassa. Rapacitic by Laura Thalassa. This is the first in the Bargainer series. And one of the taglines it says here is make a deal if you dare. And from what I've gathered, there's a siren and she's made when you make a deal with a being, which I guess in this case, it's the Bargainer you get a bead that says you have to pay him back. And she has so many beads that it stretches all up her arm and into her past, it says. And for the last seven years, she's been collecting these beads and only death or repayment in full will fulfill the obligations. And then the bargainer comes in and he's asking for repayment. That's kind of all I know about it, but I'm curious. I really like this wing thing. I think bat wings are super cool and I don't know. It may not be my thing, but it's kind of, it seems like it's kind of dark and spooky and has bat wings. So I'm kind of down, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. The next one I picked up that I've actually already started and I'm planning on getting a review up soon, as soon as I can finish it, is For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. And this just came out in, on June 1st. Cover's absolutely stunning. 
And I've heard this compared a lot to like Naomi Novik's Uprooted and Spinning Silver. I haven't read those, but I can kind of see where they're coming from just based on the synopsis of what I know from Uprooted. But basically the whole notion of this book so far from what I've read and from like the synopsis is that when you have two daughters and you're in a certain family, the first daughter is for the throne and the second daughter is for the wolf. And what happens is the daughter that is deemed for the wolf is dressed in red, like her cloak, and they are taken into this forest, this magical forest that's really dangerous and like nobody goes in there because you'll die. Take them into the forest, you give them to the wolf. And the wolf is a man. But I don't think you know that going in. Like I don't think she knows that, but you know that as the reader, that the wolf is a man and then it kind of unravels from there. A lot of the plot is kind of a mystery to me and I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. I don't want to spoil anything yet, but I will do a review on this and let you know. The next book I got is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. And this book is so pretty, but basically what this is, is the main character is an ever witch and she is, she's supposed to have control over every season and she's losing control of her magic and she doesn't know what's happening. And it's kind of her journey trying to retake that and it goes into each season of the year. That's really all I know about it. But like, as you can see, it says like autumn. It's split up into the different seasons and it sounds interesting. And I kind of want to go into this and more blind than usual just because I think it'll be more fun that way. But look at this. So they're only doing this on the first print run. So if you're interested in this book and you want this cover, I would go ahead and grab it. But this is what the Naked hardcover looks like and it's so pretty. Look at that. It's just super pretty. So if you want it, I don't wanna encourage you to buy a book that you don't want just because of the Naked hardcover. But if you do want the book and you do want to read it, then I would suggest grabbing it. But that's The Nature of Witches. The book stack beside me is getting precarious. I'm also really thankful that we just bought two more bookshelves so I don't have to worry about where these books are going. One of the other new releases I got is Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. You may be asking yourself, you're not, but do you own three Trisha Levenseller books and you haven't read a single one? Yes, I do. Have not read a single one of her books, but the premises are obviously very interesting to me and I hope that I like them. <laughs> it's about a blacksmith and I believe she has like some social anxiety. So she prefers to like work with her hands and do her work rather than be around people, which is just kind of hilarious that there's a main character like that. I appreciate that. I like people, but I understand there's days where I'm just like, I don't want to see anyone. And she is like commissioned to craft the sword that when you use it against your enemies, it reveals all of their secrets. I think she finds out that the person that commissioned this sword, she makes it, the person that commissioned this sword is gonna use it for evil and she takes it and run and has to run away. I think it's with her sister, with her friend, something like that. She has to flee with this sword until they can find a worthy wielder. I don't know, that sounds super interesting and I love that she's a blacksmith. I do have one other book. It's up there, Forged of Fire and Stars. That's also about a girl blacksmith. I think that just sounds really interesting and I think I'm gonna really love this. I've heard that this is the first in a series, which usually she does standalones. The cover is also super cool. Now this just seems like a story that's really up my alley. The next one that I got that I'll go over quickly because I got it in a fairy loot and did an unboxing is The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. It says, don't let her die, we are coming. And there's a girl that's a healer and she works in the prison. Super cool. Okay, the next one I got because I got a good deal on it and I was shocked because again, it just came out is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. I have never read Red Queen or any other works by this author, but I have wanted to give her a shot. And so I thought I would go ahead and grab this one because the premise sounds really interesting to me. And on the back, I'll just kind of read you this. This is the part that was interesting to me and why I wanted to pick it up is it says a squire, the survivor of a failed quest, an immortal, timeless and unfathomable, an assassin, skilled and heartless, an old sorceress holding secrets behind her teeth, and a pirate's daughter, the world's last hope. The heroes are gone, but the fight to save the world has only just begun. Just that, like, I don't even need to know the rest of it. Just that, I'm super intrigued. And because I already knew I wanted to try this author out, because I've, I've waffled, honestly, off and on about if I want to read Red Queen, and I think I might do it eventually, especially if I like this book, but I just decided I was gonna go ahead and try this book from her first. Also, this cover's super cool. She's grabbing the sword so hard she's bleeding because she's grabbing the blade, obviously. Not good swordsmanship. And the end pages of this map. I'm really excited about this one. This next one I got because I actually love this book 
and I've never had a hard copy of it. I listened to it from the library and then I immediately bought the second and the third when they came out and I never had the first one so I really wanted to grab it because it is one of my favorite series and that is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I, this is one of my favorite series, it's, or I guess it's a trilogy. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time. I loved it. It's about superheroes and villains. The superheroes are called the Renegades and there's this other team of called anarchists that were left over from this like war that happened. And the anarchists are trying to take down the renegades and they're just trying to basically take them down so that there's no law and people can just kind of do what they want and then live their own lives, be left in peace type of a thing. And the renegades are obviously seeing everything else as villains. They're kind of like police, they're trying to do all this good. And then you kind of see the corruption of both sides. One of the anarchists goes undercover to infiltrate the renegades and becomes one of them and tries to take them down from the inside. It was such a fun series. I loved it so much. And I feel like this book and that series does not get talked about enough. I think it's really underrated and I really love it. So if you like superheroes like I do, I would pick up this book and give it a shot because it's super fun. The next one I bought is a trilogy. I bought this box set because I've wanted to read it for a long time and the next one's coming out soon. So I just went ahead and bit the bullet, especially because it was a good price, but it is the Witchland series. So it's Truth Witch by Suzanne Denard, Wind Witch, and Blood Witch. And I really wanted to read these for a long time and I'm excited that I finally have them. And I feel like, I, well, I guess it makes sense if the fourth one's coming out. I've seen a lot of people start reading them recently even though they've kind of been on my list for a while, but I'm sure it's because the fourth one's coming out. That makes sense, duh. What this is about is there's different types of witches and our main character finds out that she's a truth witch, which means she can tell when people are lying, which is a very attractive quality to rulers, mercenaries, whoever. And so she is being hunted because people want to use her for her power. And so she's on the run. And then what happens is a blood witch, which is like the title of the third book, once he smells your blood, he can track you no matter where you are. So he gets the scent of her and he starts tracking her. And so they're just like on the run. I don't know. This sounds so cool. Kind of all I know about it, but I don't care. I'm pumped about this series and I cannot wait to start it. Now we're going to get into my baby. So if you know me, I love the Caraval series. Stephanie Garber has become one of my favorite authors and I want to collect the UK editions and I'm, all, I'm also going to collect the, U, the US and the UK editions of the new series she's going to be coming out with. The first one's coming out in October. If you don't know, the first Carval book in the UK hardcover edition is extremely hard to find. They don't make it anymore, so you either have to buy it off of somebody or you have to buy it from like a bookstore used. And I found a copy and it's a little bit up, but I don't care. The UK edition of Carval by Stephanie Garber this bar it's so cool and I actually ordered the legendary and finale and the UK hardcover editions also but they haven't come yet so I have this one let me show you so each of the UK hardcover editions has a secret foiling on the hardcover and you don't know like and there was like four different designs I think and you don't know which of the four designs you're getting until you get the book and I got the top hat I just squealed when it came in the mail yesterday and I cannot explain to you how excited I am to have this and as soon as I get the UK editions they're gonna go right up there with my US editions and I am so excited you can't pry this out of my cold dead hands I love it so much I'm so pumped if you don't know what Caraval is what are you doing here I'm just kidding I love it Caraval is about a magical performance and these two sisters go it's been their dream to go and so they go to Caraval but the, one of the sisters is kidnapped and the other sister has to play the game in order to save her sister. But it's, it's more dangerous than it seems and the whole tagline is them saying, remember, it's only a game. I love this series so much. The next stack is going to be some of the adult fantasy I've picked up, which I'm excited about. So let me get into that. So the first one I've got, I've heard mixed reviews about this, but I'm interested to see what it's about, is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. And I, this one's really hard to describe to me. So, and I don't think I'm going to be able to communicate it well, so I'm just going to read you what it says on the back of the book because I don't think I'm going to be able to articulate it well. Um, oh, it's blurred by Sarah J. Maas. Did not expect that. It says, The Emperor's reign has lasted for decades. His mastery of bone shard magic, powering the animal-like constructs that maintain law and order. But now his rule is failing, and revolution is sweeping across the Empire's many lands. 
When the emperor refuses to recognize his daughter as heir to the throne, she vows to prove her worth by mastering the forbidden art of bone shard magic. Yet such magic carries a deadly cost. That's all I know about it. Literally, that's it. But sounds super interesting. That magic sounds interesting. I've heard it's very complicated and I've heard it kind of does a disservice if you listen to it on audiobook. So grab this. Hope I enjoy it. We'll see. The next ones I got was this set because the set was a really good price and I've been wanting to read the first one for a long time. And that is Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. Sorry, my light is always so shiny on these covers. And this is the first in the Raven's Shadow trilogy or series. I don't know if there's going to be more books. The main character is a child when his father leaves him at this order. And basically the order is like, it's called the Sixth Order or something. And it's a caste system. And this caste that he's left to is devoted to battle. And he's kind of like trained and hardened and mad. He has no family anymore. And he's just kind of like brewing this angst, just anger. And then he finds out that he was being deprived of his birthright because his father was a battle lord to the king. And he's got a bunch of rage that's building because he doesn't understand why he's being deprived of his birthright. But he's destined for a future beyond comprehension and that it's not only going to change the realm, but the world. That's all I know. I've heard Elliot Brooks talk about this and I've just been really interested in it. So I went ahead and got it. This is the first one and I got Tower Lord, which is the second one in that series. And then I grabbed Queen of Fire, which is the third. I've just been trying to get into some more adult fantasy and this is one I've been really interested in. And I was able to get them in the big paperbacks, not the mass market paperbacks, because I hate mass market paperbacks. So when I saw them adult fantasy novels for, you know, four dollars instead of 18 to 24 a piece I went ahead and grabbed them while I could and I hope I really like them okay last two we're getting there this one I got because I actually saw one of the books and I really wanted it and it's really hard to find unless you get it in mass market paperback but if you try to find like a hardcover they're really expensive because it came out a while ago and then I found this and was absolutely pumped and bought it immediately so this is a Star Wars book and it is the Dark Lord Trilogy. So these are three books that are all about Darth Vader in this bind up. The first one is The Labyrinth of Evil, Revenge of the Sith, and Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader. And Dark Lord The Rise of Darth Vader is the one that I wanted to buy by itself. I found this bind up of three different stories of Darth Vader. So Labyrinth of Evil is about Darth Vader and then Revenge of the Sith is about Anakin becoming Darth Vader if you've seen the movies. And two of these novels are written by James Lucino. And the other one is written by Matthew Stover based on the screenplay play from George Lucas, obviously, because it's Revenge of the Sith. And this follows an epic chain of events, the last days of the Republic, the creation of the Empire, and the ultimate transformation of Jedi Anakin Skywalker into the notorious Darth Vader. This book is for me. I cannot wait. If you don't know me, I love Darth Vader. He's my favorite character in Star Wars. And I love Anakin Skywalker. And reading about the transformation of Anakin into Darth Vader and then Darth Vader right after Revenge of the Sith is something that I always want to learn more about and it really is, is really interesting to me. I really want them to do the Darth Vader series and I think they're they're definitely including him in the Obi-Wan show that's coming to Disney Plus because they cast Hayden Christensen <laughs> for his part as Darth Vader and I can't wait. It's gonna be so great. But anyway, I love reading and watching those things about Darth Vader, so I cannot wait to read these. I'm so pumped. Oh, if you don't know, I'm actually wearing a shirt. It's a tie-dye shirt and it says, you underestimate my power, which is what Anakin says in Revenge of the Sith. The back has his lightsaber. You're not really gonna be able to see it. But obviously I love Anakin. I love Darth Vader. This is just a precious little bind up I found and I'm just so excited. It's really floppy. Okay, last book. So this next book, I've never read from this author, but again, have really wanted to get into more adult fantasy. And this is one of the authors that was kind of on the top of my list because I've heard that they write amazing battle scenes. And battle scenes are something that I feel like I'm often disappointed in, in a lot of fantasy books. And that's probably because I'm reading more YA than I am high adult fantasy. Because I read these battles or these like giant wars that are going on and I'm like, that's it. That was over in like two seconds or some magical help came for you i don't know i just i always feel like the battles are not enough for me they're not they're not written long enough or they're just not enough so i've heard this author is great at those and that is john gwen and so i went ahead and got shadow of the gods by john gwen 
Again, I've been wanting to read John Gwen for a while, but also when I saw that this book was coming out and the premise, I was sold. Like, look at this, okay. There's a beautiful dragon on the cover. That's the person. Look at that scale. He's like shorter than one of his fangs, one of his teeth. Now my husband's mowing. Sorry if you can hear all of this. He was doing yard work while I was filming, so. But if this is about dragons, I'm sold. That's all I need to know, honestly. And it says, when the gods fought, it was a battle so savage they destroyed themselves, leaving nothing but their bones and the broken land of Vigrid in their wake. Now as whispers of war echo over the fjords and across the plains, fate follows in the footsteps of three warriors, a huntress on a perilous quest, a noble woman pursuing battle fame, and a thrall seeking retribution among mercenaries known as the Bloodsworn. All three will change the course of the world as it once more falls under the shadow of the gods. So it's, it's an Nordic inspired, which is really cool. And I really hope there's gonna be dragons. John Gwen, if there's not dragons in this book and you put a dragon on the cover, we're gonna have words. But yeah, like I said, I've been wanting to read John Gwen for a long time. And I've heard a lot of good things about Malice and the way he writes combat and battle scenes. So I'm very excited for this and I can't wait. I need to get to this soon. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this giant book haul. Please let me know what books you're excited to read, what books you've picked up recently, or any anticipated releases you're looking forward to. If you want to see book reviews or chats over any of these books, please let me know down below in the comments. I would love to do those for you. Hopefully when we build these two bookshelves that just came and we get my books reorganized, I can start thinking about filming a bookshelf tour because I know some of you asked for that. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more, you can go ahead and subscribe. Stay safe and caffeinated. I feel like I need to start saying may the force be with you, but was that copyright? I don't know.